What is up? What is up, everybody? Um, so, first of all, um, <clears throat> yes, I am aware Tecton made another video about me. No, I do not care, and no, we are not going to address it, and no, we're not going to respond to it, and no, we're, we're just moving on. Um, so, I just want to, you know, let you know I meant what I said, and I said what I meant, and we are not... That chapter is over. The Tecton chapter of this channel has passed, and we are moving on to brighter and better things. Um, so today, um, me and Jarl, uh, who is my friend CheekyVim208, um, who uh, I am quite close with, uh, had a little debate. And the debate began um, because I was um, basically... <sighs> I have this absolute knee-jerk reaction when people talk about forcing kids to take sex education. Now, I don't mind it being an optional class, but I get just furious when people say that it has to be um, mandatory, um, because I feel like it is a private matter that should be taught by parents. Um, and, you know, Cheeky started bringing up some very valid points. And it made me start realizing that there's two different things going on here. There is my morality and my belief that sex is sacred. And, um, and you know, I know that that word sacred means, like, religion to a lot of people. Um, well, and I guess there's really no other way of looking at it, because sacred would, would mean that it was holy. Um, and so, and I do really believe that it is. Um, but more so than that, you know, I just think that it is an emotional uh, thing, that love has to be involved or you're going to hurt yourself emotionally. When people have sex and it's outside of love, I believe that it deadens the spirit um, to one degree or another. And I know that there are examples of people who don't feel that way, but I don't think that you always know that it's happening. I, I don't think that that when you don't have much to compare it to, or, or when you've been doing it so long you can't remember what you were like before, or when you may have blocked it out of your mind because you don't want to remember, um, that you always realize that it has, has numbed you. Um, but, you know, children obviously know that there's something weird about sex. When something sexual happens to them as a child, they know something bad has happened. They know something weird has happened, and they are scarred from it. So obviously sex holds a big tie to our emotions, and it is more than just some physical act of reproduction. For the human, it does something uh, sp almost spiritual, um, or you might want to say highly emotional. Um, and so, you know, for me, that has no place in the classroom. Um, you know, I just don't, I don't like that. It, 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 it's, if you want to teach it, give me the choice to opt out of it. It's how I feel. Um, but Cheeky started bringing up points about society and how, um, s sociologically, if you go by my standard, then kids grow up with no idea of how to protect themselves from STDs. They don't know how to, um... Uh, they don't know things that they're going to find out from the wrong sources, and parents can't be trusted to teach the, their kids these things. Now, I would argue that teachers can't be trusted to do it either, because there are some wacko teachers out there, but I can't cite any evidence right now. So, anyways, my point is not to get into the discussion of the sex education uh, thing. My point is that I started realizing something very strange that was going on. I have knee-jerk, hugely emotional responses to this subject, I feel just incredibly passionate about it, to the point of getting angry when people try to say that my kids should be forced to take these classes if I don't want them to take them. Cheeky has the same kind of reaction, probably not to the extent that I do, but I'm just an incredibly passionate person, um, but he feels that that is incredibly morally apprehensible because it is going to harm society as a whole in the long run if we don't teach ki kids about this and we can only trust that the schools will do it because we can't trust that the parents will do it and then it got me thinking like where do these convictions come from and how do they get so emotional the, the typical normal response is it's your upbringing and it is um, that you were brought up to think one way and so that is why you think that but that can't that doesn't hold water because I was brought up to think a lot of things that I don't think. I, I, my parents still believe that homosexuals cannot be Christians, and they should not be allowed in the church until they fix their homosexuality. I think that's ridiculous. They, they have no choice as to whether or not they're a homosexual. To say that they can't be a part of the church is just crazy. Um, 
you know, my parents brought me up to believe that you have to confess the name of Jesus and believe in your heart that he is who he said he is. And, well, it, of course, believing in the heart and believing in the head is very different. But they, they think it's believing in the head. They think you have to believe in your head that Jesus is, you know, whatever. And it's like once you make that shift in your mind that, that Jesus is the Son of God, now you can go to heaven. But before you made that shift in your mind, you couldn't. I think that's ridiculous. Why would, why would your entry to heaven be uh, dependent on, on a mindset? Shouldn't it be dependent on a heart set? On what you do, what you feel, who you are, not what you think? Um, but my point is that I was brought up to believe those things, and I don't. And there are tons of people, Mormons, who were brought up to be Mormon, and they leave their church, um, you know, to go to other things. Atheists who were brought up to be atheists, and they find Christ, and decide that's what they want to do. So your upbringing can't be used as, as where we get our moral convictions from. They come from within us. They come from something inside of us that seems to be speaking to us, and we get them so strongly that we get disgusted at certain things. And, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about that's so insane is the vegetarianism meat issue, you know, because there are vegetarians who think that eating meat is like murdering a human. And then there are people who think that that's just flanking ridiculous. And... And so you have these, and the vegetarians, they have that conviction. When they think of people eating meat, they are disgusted. They are as disgusted as, as you would be about, you know, somebody who was killing another human being. They, they're just horrified, and it, 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 it gives them that tinge, that feeling, that, that, that hurt thing that, that, that we can't describe, but we all know what it feels like when you're just <gasps> shocked and horrified. And then there are people who just don't have that when it comes to eating meat. They're just like, it's just eating meat, you know? Um, and we can go around in these circles and argue all day and we, you know, and there are some people who are good at trying to see the logic of what they're saying outside of the emotions and there are some people who just throw logic to the wind because they feel their emotions so strongly and where do we find truth in all this? And where are these feelings coming from? And what causes them? And how do we know who's right and who's wrong? And do we decide this as a society? Because it's so relative, um, in a way. There are things we can all agree on. We can all agree on that killing a human being is a bad thing. We can all agree on that, um, to, um, I don't know, uh, to give heroin to a child would be a horrible, horrible thing to do. Um, we can all agree on that, okay? But then, you know, then you go to, like, say, back to the vegetarian issue, and we can't agree on that. I'm sure there's vegetarians who think you should probably be put in jail if you, if you kill an animal. Um, there are other people who would be just outraged at that. So, they're outraged that you're killing an animal, the other person's outraged that you're saying that the other person is, is bad for killing an animal, and they're both feeling it passionately. So passion doesn't amount to much, does it? So where do we find truth? And how do we decide what it is? I don't have an answer. I'm just posing questions. This is all just fascinating to me. Because we can't... Our emotions can lie. Because both parties can't be right. It can't be right to eat meat and wrong to eat meat at the same time. Yet there are people who totally emphatically believe it is right and totally em people that totally emphatically believe it is wrong. Um, and it's just fascinating. So I'm just proposing all of this to you guys and just kind of like, let's discuss. What, what is morality? Where does it come from? Who is right? Who is wrong? And how should society try to decide what is moral and what is not? Where does it even come from? What philosophers have discussed this in the past? Who has thought about this before? Because, you know, feelings can't be the basis for it, and yet feelings shouldn't be denied or neglected or treated as though they're not important because we have feelings. The only reason we have feelings is because they are a part of our makeup, so feelings are there for a reason. They, they can't be thrown out, but they can't be relied upon as a basis for lawmaking and truth-finding either. So, where is the middle ground? Where is the middle ground? It's just very fascinating. Let's discuss it amongst ourselves. Um, yeah. Peace out, guys.